What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. Standing here next to me in the Xbox, Casey Mitchell, that one-legged monster. Guys, today we are talking about the big three. And we're actually gonna start a little series here. We're gonna break down how you can improve your lifts, the big three, the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. But more importantly, it's not by just hammering away at those exercises, right? We, we, I talked about before this whole idea about building true strength and compensatory strength. And we want our true strength to be there. And the way we get that is we want to avoid compensations by building up all the stabilizer muscles, by hitting those accessory lifts, right? Absolutely. The things that make it big. And Casey is a huge believer in the accessory lifts. And he actually spends more time in a training session doing my accessory lifts than yeah, you do on the big lifts. Big lifts absolutely. And, and that's what we're all here about. Now, for those guys that don't know Casey's story, he was wounded in combat. He's actually the strongest uh, amputee power lifter in the world. Guys, there's no excuses here, okay? So you can do this no matter what your situation is. You're probably just making excuses thinking that, oh, I've tapped out in strength. My gains are gone, there's nothing left. That's bullshit, guys. You can do more if you start looking at the things that you need to, and in this case, it's gonna be hitting these accessory lifts. So if we're gonna start with today, we're gonna start with the squat, and the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the box squat here. So now the box squat, what is your main reason why you use this as one of your big main accessory lifts here? One, it's, it's gonna build confidence in the squat. You know, that's a, a number one thing I feel like people fear is the squat and they're you know, coming down with heavier weight. Um, you, have, you have something here, it's gonna give you a little bit more of uh, confidence, you know? Yeah. Uh, the other one is explosion. Um, when you come down with the squat, you come down to a complete stop. And the only way to get up is to fire out of the hole. And uh, that's gonna help you with your main squat when you kind of come down and you kind of finally break, break the plane. And when you get ready to fire out of there, it's building those muscles to the explosive muscles. And yeah. that's a, it's a huge thing that uh, a lot of people do is when they get to the squat, that's where they get buried at. Now, a lot of guys, when they do the box squat, they, they don't pause at the bottom. Right, so they'll just come those kind of tap their ass out and come yes. out. Yeah. But it, almost for me, that's a different purpose in training. I mean, if you're going for explosivity here, zero momentum. Yeah, it, absolutely. It, yeah, Complete I mean, stop. and I like to pause anyway at the bottom me of too. any squat. What about height? Like, how low do you like to generally uh, honestly, go? Honestly, so for me, when I'm doing competitions, um, as I get closer to comps, I actually lower the box down mm -hmm. because. We gotta, because if you think about the squat, as you're squatting, the muscles have got to stretch too. So when I'm getting down lower on the box, I need to stretch these muscles out down here and build more explosion. If you only do box squats and you get down into that hole, those muscle fibers down there are not ready for that kind of weight load. Mm -hmm. So as I get closer to comp, I lower the box, lower the box, and then the box is gone the last four weeks. And that's strictly my training. That's not how a lot of power lifters train. Um, that's mine because of hip mobility problems and certain things that you know I've had due to the, my injuries. Mm -hmm. But uh, the box squat is what has built me to be able to squat. I mean, uh, I box squatted for two years straight before I actually free squatted for the very first there's time. A, there's a ton of athletes that literally do have that same story. The one thing though that does it drives me nuts is when guys do get down. If you're gonna pause, which I think is awesome, mm -hmm. the bad thing you can't let go of your core. As soon as you cave. Now the load is really coming yeah. down on your spine. So the main thing to do is to uh, is keep tight, keep mm -hmm. the neck tucked back, pulling the bar down. If you can pull the bar down like you're doing a lap pull, it's gonna keep everything tight, obviously, keeping the core tight. Big deep breath coming down, stop. As you come up to explode, that's when you start to exhale as yeah. you're coming out of the yeah. hole. Cool, that's an awesome lift. That's the first one, guys. Got two more. All right, the second accessory lift is the good morning. Now this is a, a lift that I've actually talked about before that I actually hate, but hate only because most people screw this up entirely wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. It's a, uh, they, it, the back. They, totally. They lead with that back and it's not just the back. It's really, honestly, I feel like 20% back. You know, um, it's something that I feel like if you're not feeling in your hamstrings and your glutes, yeah. You're, you're doing it improperly. Um, I, you should walk away from this with like no back pain. Um, you could have a slight back pump depending on rep range, um, but this is not something where you walk out of here and your back it should be like aching you at any any point. You should actually be coming out of here with your hamstrings and your glutes like firing off. Yeah, well, I mean, again, done properly, I actually think it's one of my favorite exercises because it teaches the hip hinge. Yes. The hip hinge is, is, is literally critical, especially if you're gonna do the box squats. Absolutely. If you don't have good hip hinge, yes. you're not gonna hit it right. The thing too is bar path. Bar but your bar path when you do it literally is almost going completely vertical. Yeah. Whereas most people when they do it and they screw it up, they've got it here and the first move 
is forward. The bar literally goes forward four, five, six inches, yep. which is gonna put all that load on the low back in an, un in an unsafe way. Yep. But you're doing it because, why? Because that hinge is hinge. It's, part of, it's part of the squat. Right. You know? Um, uh, and you know, yeah, you'll see a lot of people when they, they go to these good mornings, they, they get dumped over. Right. Uh, it's because they're, they're allowing that bar to get out in front of them like that. Um, you know, and another thing with the, you know, the good morning, it's not something that you need to sit here and stack tons of weight on right, totally. and go for a couple reps. It's not, that's not what it's about. Um, so like, you know, we got 225 here, uh, did it for five very easy ones. You know, yeah. something obviously I could probably hit for 10 yeah. and that's good. You know, yeah. yeah, could I go up to, you know, can you get stronger at this? Absolutely. Uh, but this is not something where I feel like you should be doing one to three rep ranges at by any means. Right, when you're working on it from an accessory standpoint, you're just trying to, you're just trying to hit quality reps and again, keep it within a rep range that isn't necessarily gonna be pushing you Absolutely. to the max. Absolutely. Right? All right, and the last one here is actually, it's a variation of a goblet squat. Right? And what I do is I like to take a band, put it around my hip, and I'll explain why I do that in the first place. But when we talk about the goblet squat itself, the first thing I like about it is teaching depth and breaking parallel. It's good to learn depth. Um, you know, just like we were discussing a while ago, um, a lot of people are intimidated with the bars on their back going to depth, mm -hmm. falling down on it, crushing them. Right. With the, a gobbler squat, you're able to just release just it. Just dump it, yeah. If you get like, you know, scared or anything like that, or the confidence isn't there. So what, what I think with the, with the gobbler squat is it sits perfectly right in center and mass. along the, right, on the yeah. center of mass. And when we go down, it literally takes you straight down and it puts you in that spot. So without the band, if I were to get here in my goblet squat, I'd be up here. And again, I'm not, I'm just literally holding as close to my body as I can. And I just sit straight down right here. And it teaches you how to open your hips, right? You gotta keep your elbows on the inside so it, you have to leave room for them. So you have to open your hips. And then when we come out, we come straight up out of that hole. But I mentioned the band. The thing about the band is I feel that when you get down to new depths and your hips do open, that's when they also become the most unstable. So when you get into deep reflection, they become more unstable. And that's where you'll see sometimes when people go down deep and then when they come out, it's that knee kicking in on, on the bottom. So what you do is, obviously we're told, keep the knees out, spread the floor. But with the band, you put it around your outside leg, you step out, and now even without the dumbbell for a second, I'm out here. I have to push out here because otherwise the leg is gonna cave in that so, way. For, so like a lot of things what I see with squatters is um, you'll see over a period of time where they start to squat. And then, so this is actually a really good tool. When they start to squat, they actually get buried down on one side. So when you have the band, right. it's actually gonna start to help, you know, get strength on the, the side that you are bearing your down, yeah. bearing down too far on. You just basically cave a little right, bit on right. the side sometimes. And that's just due to the weak hips or something like that. So with the belt, with the band and the gobbler squat combination, you're getting a lot of benefit out of this. Yeah. Down and out. There you go. And I'm fighting it. it wants to pull me in here. You're not really looking for max out here. Like, this is really technique once again. Technique, uh, good volume. Yeah, and, yeah exactly. Stabilizer muscles uh, and things like that down on the hips, uh, the adductors and things like that, you know, are gonna come into play with all this stuff, you know? And a lot of times, no matter how heavy you can squat, yeah. the, weak, the, the hips can still be incredibly weak. Yeah. And they may not tolerate a whole hell of a lot of load. And the cool thing about the band is you can self-regulate, step further, step further, step further, especially as you get stronger and stronger. But there, guys, that's three of the accessory lifts that are going to help you to start building that squat back up again. Like I said, don't easily give in and think that you've maxed on your strength. As I said, we, we, I, I, there's, a, there's this true strength and then there's compensatory strength. You can't keep trying to get your strength through compensation because ultimately it's going to break you down. Yep. You got to look for how to build your true strength and sometimes it means hitting some of the smaller exercises to help you to, we to strengthen up those weak links in the chain mm -hmm. to get that to start going yeah, back up again. A lot of guys, they all, you know, I get talked to a lot about because I am a power lifter, strength guy. It's, well, I'm at a plateau. Why am I at a plateau? And then I'm like, well, do you do these exercises? And 99% of the time, it's like, no. Right. Well, that's that's why you're hitting a plateau. Or spend the time that you do on them. Right. Or, or yeah, or, or spend more time. You know, uh, when people are wanting to, we when we power lift, we spend a lot of energy doing those big lifts. Mm -hmm. I got that. It wears you down. But you got to kind of buckle down and go hit those accessories and you got to hit them a little bit harder than what you're doing over here and you got to really really focus on them because it's going to transition to your big lift and uh, if you are hitting those plateaus you feel like you're stuck or you just in your head think you can't get stronger go harder on the accessories yeah, the plateau is going to go away 
Yeah, each of these is addressing a slightly different problem area within the squat. And again, put together, it's a pretty comprehensive and, and, and condensed version so that the guys can benefit from, right. from not having to load it up and, or start spending hours and hours and hours additional to right. what they're already yeah. doing. You may be uh, weak in the hole and then all of a sudden you do the, all the accessories and you get strong in the hole and then all of a sudden your lockout on your squat is terrible. So now we got to figure out why mm -hmm. and then we got to do the accessories to attack that. So guys, there you have it from the monster himself. I, I, I know why they call him the monster, guys. He came in here, he tore this place up. But that's the way it's supposed to be. Guys, if you want to look like an athlete, you got to train like an athlete. But more importantly, I always say, you got to take your training seriously. All the little things matter. It's not just focused on the big things here. If you're looking for a program, guys, that looks at everything, overlooks nothing, that's what Athletics does. All of our programs are available over at Athletics.com. In the meantime, the one-legged monster and myself, we're going to be back here for more. Guys, we've got other lifts to cover. We're going to hit the bench press. We're going to hit the deadlift as well. All right, guys, we'll be back here again soon. See ya.